Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Camouflage of the World. I am Mike B, and today we're going to be taking a look at the Spanish M09 or 2009 desert slash urban camouflage pattern. So I already did the video on the woodland variant of this. Both of these were introduced in the same year. This has got the same concept. Uh, I was kind of joking in the last video about the Spanish M09 woodland that it looks like multicam and a couple pixelated patterns had a baby and in the process the colors improved. So um, I'm a big fan of not having just one uniform. I'm a big fan of having a woodland and a arid, an, an arid, an, yes, I know how to English a little bit, um, variant instead of just having one all encompassing thing like multicam. People seem to think that works everywhere. I disagree. So that's why I like this pattern. It's a pretty cool one. The woodland one is really neat as well. Um, this again was introduced in 2009. I'm pretty sure, I don't know if they phased this out to go, you know, with all the cool kids going to multicam, but I hope they didn't. So yeah, 2009, it's 2020 right now. Hopefully they still use this. If they don't, let me know. Um, I can't really find any definitive answers. I'm sure reserve units use them if nothing else. Anyway, so yeah, this features, it's a three color pattern, which I think desert three colors, uh, three colored patterns are probably the most effective because there's not a whole lot of variation of color like there is in a woodland environment in the desert. It's mainly just a couple different hues and the sun makes everything look different in different light. So that's why this is good. It's got a medium brown, kind of you can see the darker, which would be medium brown, and a sand color on a tan or khaki beige, whatever you want to call it, background, really light color. That's what you want for a desert. You don't want too much of the dark contrasting stuff. This is a pretty good pattern in my opinion. Would love to see it tested. I haven't actually seen pictures of Spanish troops wearing this in a desert. Should probably just do some Googling. But um, yeah, it looks like it'd be very effective. So what we'll do right now is we'll take a look at the cut and we'll get a little bit of a closer look and then we'll wrap the video up. Right away, you can tell it's the same exact cut if you haven't seen the Spanish woodland one. It's the same exact cut as the Spanish woodland. Same material and everything like that. Now, the pockets are a little bit different on the sleeves, but there's still pockets there. This one actually does have the Spanish flag patch. I think that might be like a name tape or something like that area to put that. And then you've got the pocket over here again. And this one's actually got, oh, it looks like a unit patch or a branch of service patch, which I'm guessing is something to do with armor because of the uh, FT-17 on the patch. That's a really cool design, actually, the wreath of the FT-17. It's 3D as well. It's really interesting. Anyway, so yeah, it's got those. And um, it's also got, just like on the woodland one, it's got these shoulder pads in here. And Devin K and I were talking like, well, is that good or bad? Maybe, you know, it probably relieve some of the pressure off, you know, from your plate carrier or whatever, your equipment. But would it get all hot and sweaty and disgusting and slippery and stink really bad? So if you're ever in the Spanish military, let me know if those shoulder pads ever did anything for you, good or bad. Because I'd be curious, it's one of the only military uniforms I've seen that's got shoulder pads in them. Uh, maybe it'd be comfortable, maybe it wouldn't. All right, um, get a close-up of the pattern here in the ripstop material. So yeah, just a simple three color. Just look at that. It's pretty, pretty good. And they're, they're good color. It's kind of that pinkish sand color. So in the desert, that's a very prominent color. All right, we'll go wrap the video up. Overall, I'm pretty impressed. Uh, Spain usually has some pretty cool equipment. Um, people underestimate and just kind of forget about Spain a lot. And I do not. I think their gear is awesome, which is why I wish it was a lot easier to get in the United States. It's really not easy to get Spanish surplus, especially with modern stuff. I don't know why that is. I don't know if Spain, just like most other European countries, destroys all their stuff because they don't want people wearing it. But I think it's really cool. I'd love to get a set of this stuff too and test it out in a desert environment, which I'd have to fly quite a ways in the U.S. to find. But nevertheless, it'd be cool to just have a bunch of these and go out to a desert someday and check it out. But anyway, uh, this stuff is really comfortable. It's really sleek. It's designed well. I like Spanish uniforms in general. Hopefully, hopefully they don't go the multicam route, but I guess everybody's doing that nowadays because I like having militaries have different uniforms it's fun to be able to identify them even without a flag patch but most americans don't know flag patches or flags much less where spain is on a map i bet you most americans can't even point out spain on a map i certainly can anyway going off the rails as usual so that's all i've got i'll wrap this up if you would like to support the my work and the channel financially the link to my patreon is in the description and also now you can become a member of my youtube channel after years of not allowing me to have that option for whatever reason Hope. Oh, Watch just beeped weird, and yeah. So Patreon starts at a dollar a month, and if you do five bucks a month or more on either platform, you get access to my Discord server, which is a pretty fun time. A lot of information is exchanged. Crowdfunding just really helps offset the cost of a lot of more expensive videos, like ballistic tests on helmets and body armor. Um, just shooting videos in general, ammo is definitely not getting any cheaper. 
either our military surplus firearms or helmets to make educational videos on. So I can fund it to a certain point out of pocket, but I'm very limited. Crowdfunding allows me to have access to more content to make for educational purposes than I would if I did not have it. So if you can't support the channel financially, I totally understand that you're supporting it enough by watching and you know, giving the thumbs up, which actually does matter algorithmically apparently. So yeah, that's why I make videos is for people to watch. And I also make this particular series. So it's kind of a field identification guide. You can kind of get yourselves familiar with uh, different camouflage patterns from around the world. So if you find something oddly enough at like a thrift store or, you know, you know Goodwill or something like that, or flea market, you can be like, oh, well, that's a Spanish M09 desert or that's German Flecton or that's Bulgarian and this and that, you know, so it's just kind of a field identification guide. So that's all I've got for this. Thanks for watching, everybody. I do appreciate it. We'll see you on the next episode of Camouflage of the World.